I'm glad that I had an excuse to like get out of bed. Yeah. I've, I've literally been wearing this 100X hoodie for four weeks. There's like, and I've never washed it. So it's like that pure, like new merch black. Oh yeah. And so my excuse to myself is like, it'll get, it'll be like messed up if I ever wash it. It's just not true. I smell like a trash can. <laughs> uh, I've also been like cooking a bunch, which is I think what everybody is doing, but like there is no excuse to still be wearing this. <laughs> Hi. Hello, sir. <laughs> How are you? Hi, man. Um, I'm pretty, I'm, <laughs> I'm okay today. Yeah. How are you? Oh my God. Yeah. I'm like emotionally just destroyed. I don't oh. know. I did buy a treadmill though. Did you? It ha- has like changed the game. I really like fucked up knees though, so I can't actually run. I just like walk for like an inappropriate amount of time. Yeah. Like, like a weird, like, emo hamster staring into, like, the middle distance. Um, but I recommend. It, it honestly, it's made this, like, it breaks up the day in a way, you know? Yeah, that's not a bad idea, man. Like, I don't really have any space for a treadmill in my home. <laughs> it's not, this house is not hooked up for that. But I could just put it right in the middle of the living room, just, like, Dude, like my my like space has just become like, why not just put an amp right <laughs> here on the way to the bathroom? This has been the this has been the most like I can't I try to not talk to friends about it. I try to like just catch up with them about anything else, but it's consuming, you know? Yeah. Yeah, it really is. We're gonna be talking about this for the rest of our like it'll be in textbooks and shit yeah it's gonna it's like a collective trauma Mm -hmm. it's like it's gonna define our generation i you know people are making the you know again funny memes of like seeing a toilet paper commercial and like having like war flashbacks but but honestly there's gonna be like it's gonna it's gonna come out in those small ways i'm just looking forward weirdly to like the op-ed about like the way that certain people came together and like yes. the way that the government is evil and whatever like I just I'm like I want to look to the future to the think pieces where this is history yes dude that's getting me through it too I feel like that gets me through a lot of shit in my life I'm just like when we were sleeping in a van I was like one day we're gonna talk about this like it was really fun <laughs> it got me through it how old are you 55 <laughs> I'm 31. I'm 30. I always forget, like, I think it's just because I saw you in, like, I want to say, like, 2006 or something, and, and I was a teenager, and I was up at the front of the stage assuming that you were, like, a full-grown adult. <laughs> like, and, how it was when you saw your teacher, and she was probably, like, 21. Exactly, and I'm, like, I'm, yeah, I'm gonna be 26 this year, and I'm just, like, that's so, you've been at it this whole time. Like, I have one album. <laughs> yeah, but I was, I remember when you were like 18 or 19 and I had some of your demos and you've been at it too. Like, that's. Dude, a- yeah, you had my, you had my like auto-tuned, like <laughs> just figuring out Pro Tools demos. That's amazing. That shit was great. I remember something you wrote, like start a war or something. Oh my God whoa that's like a recovered memory (laughs) oh god that shit was good though i was um i mean i don't know if you know this about me but i was in a relationship for a really long time that wasn't good (laughs) and um i was going through a breakup and like that demo was sent to me and i was living in this empty apartment because i had been in la and then I, this was before I officially moved back home to Nashville, but I got an apartment in Franklin. I moved there in the middle of like the boom. So it just sucked. It was the worst. Yeah. But whatever. I, it was like old bricks everywhere. And I would listen to that demo all the time. That was so good. That's so cool. You have been at it too. I mean, and, and one record that has been so life-changing for a lot of people. Like I, I was just in doing an interview with someone and I was telling her how she was talking about smoke signals and I was like yeah when 
Phoebe finally put that record out or, or the single when you put out Smoke Signals, that was like song number one for every flight we got on during After Laughter. It was just so comforting to me. That's so cool. Yeah. Where, where did you go to Warp Tour? You said that you saw us at Warp Tour? Oh, no, no, no. I saw you at Bumbershoot in Seattle. Oh, Bumbershoot. I don't know why I thought you said Warp Tour, but Bumbershoot, Seattle, 2000, and was that during Riot? Yes. <laughs> this too. Like, I'd never heard of you. And mm -hmm. I um, had this, like, screamo boyfriend who was, like, yes. like, literally like this hair. And I was like texting him on my razor phone from the show because I was at Bumbershoot just for fun and then like stumbled upon Paramore. And I texted him like, yo, this sounds like a lot like the music you listen to. Yeah. What like do you like Paramore? Like what's their deal? Like I'm seeing an incredible life changing show right now. And he texted me back. Um he was like, he was like, chicks shouldn't sing in bands like that and then I just like ghosted him actually in real life we never spoke again <laughs> never spoke again it was kind of like long distance like he was he was someone I met at like summer camp yeah. that then we were like talking and we only really like made out <laughs> right of course and then and I just like I never spoke to him again but he literally said that to me he also used to like double fist monster energy drink drinks oh no 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 this guy that was like my favorite introduction to a band ever by far I think <laughs> you're welcome I don't know <laughs> that's insane to me I mean wow that people like that exist holy shit I know 2000 and whatever to 2000 and I don't know was weird like <laughs> like it was weird and and I a lot of them are are repressed memories where like I won't like like someone in a someone for like work will ask me like did you ever experience blah, blah blah and I'll be like no it was fine and then I'll be on the porch like with Joey or someone talking about life and I'll be like holy fuck that guy threw all these condoms at me and they stuck to my sweaty chest while I was on stage and then he said take off your shirt and I'm like ah I was so little if that were my kid do you know I would not care that I'm five three I would have jumped all over this I remember one time I was in at Chuck E. Cheese when I was like very young and this kid like pushed me under into the into the balls <laughs> and, and um and I remember like all I remember is like barely coming up like I'm drowning I'm like oh and I like kind of come up and I just see my mom like jumping into the ball pit and she like pushes this kid out of the way I will never forget that that's like the mom I want to be that's amazing yes Damn, that's going to be on your, like, going into the afterlife slideshow. <laughs> yeah. People who meant something to you, like, your mom is going to have her ball pit moment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm curious, what, what um, is different about your, like, personality in quarantine? Like, what have you, like, discovered about yourself or what? Because I, I personally feel like I'm I'm on like an old iOS. Like I forgot to back up my phone and then I backed it up to like a four years ago iPhone that's like glitchy and weird. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. So curious if anybody else is having that experience. <laughs> on an old iOS. I, I feel like, I mean, dude, I don't think I could sum it up that concisely. Like I, I every day feels different. Like today I'm laughing more than I have in so long. I'm thankful for that. Like, and, and I'm thankful when I can feel like goofy and, and a bit young, at, like, because what's happening right now feels so adult and shitty and dark. Um, like yesterday I was really low and I was really introspective and I, and I mean, I guess honestly, that's who I feel like I am most times now. Not that I'm not still like kind of bubbly, whatever, when I'm, when I'm comfortable with people, but like, I've found that I've found that I've been online more, which I thought I would hate, but it's brought out this side of me that like, 
genuinely just wants to connect with people. And as an introvert, I find it surprising. Yeah. Like, I'm so surprised. Like I, I just want to know what's up with people and I want to share. And I don't know, like a year ago, I was so protective of that. I took all social media off my phone. I like didn't want people to know me. Yeah. It's so nice to hear like personal accounts online. I feel like people are being more genuine, you know, like of course, of course people are like monetizing and there are like weirdos out there, but like for the most part, everybody's like, this is fucked. Yeah. Which I'm not used to seeing online. And that's actually, that's a really good thing to call out because like, it's the thing that I can't stand about being online, about our jobs, like normally managers like calling me being like um you're gonna post this thing you know that you did that you spent a lot of time on and I'll be like ah. right now I'm just like won't hear me play this <laughs> like just fucking all day and I and I'm surprised that it's actually it it actually um feels like a genuine not only representation of myself, which is the thing I hate the most about all of us, our avatars online, is it never feels like a genuine representation, but also like it, it encourages other people to talk back. And what I'm finding, what I'm feeling is like, this is who you really are. Having, you know, anxieties or, you know, having talked about depression, I feel like it becomes such clickbait shit, like sensationalized shit now. But I'm hopeful also that now that everyone really is experiencing trauma in real time, like maybe everyone will be fucking kinder to each other about the shit that they're dealing with. Wait, real quick. What's your like recipe? What's, well, I have two questions. I guess what have you made in quarantine? And also what's your like, what's the thing that like you make that your friends are like, that's bomb. Oh, I want to know this from you too. Okay. So the recipe I got that like I've le- I've li- literally like left some of these cookies on my front porch for people to come and <laughs> pick up. Um, they are these vegan brown butter banana bread chocolate chip cookies. They're stupid. I will I'll send you the recipe. They're so stupid. I can't. I just ate the last one. Yeah. It was, I had a funeral for that last cookie. Um, I'll send you that. What What have you been making? Well, I fucked up a banana bread pretty deeply. I made a really, really bad banana bread. I think that the secret is applesauce, weirdly. Yes, yes. I missed that. And so it was, like, dry, and it got moldy after, like, two days. Oh, that was really bad. bad. But, but I feel like I've made, oh, I've been doing, like, vegan mac and cheese, but, like, in the oven. Yes, yes, yes. Like, perfecting, like, I'm going to be, like, a casserole bitch when this is done. <laughs> the guys always make fun of me that since I met her in 2011, I I, I always call her Beth from Best Coast. I never. <laughs> I do that too. <laughs> so funny. It's so bad. I feel like such a. It's so name droppy, but um, <laughs> she. Is very satisfying too. Beth from Best Coast. Yeah. Well, I in my phone she's Beth Coast, Beth Coast. <laughs> but um, we're gonna like uh, cook. I think on video chat maybe one night. I, like if you want to do that, I'm down. I've been I've done that with my my granny a lot. Dude, absolutely. Yes. I'll be wearing this hoodie. <laughs> yeah, I'll probably be wearing this too. But oh my god, I'm fucking so thankful that we talked today. I needed this these Me like too, uh, such a good hang. Oh, so good. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>